It's a great honor to host this special appreciation of Stanley's immense talent as a director. He's considered by critics, well, who cares about critics anyway, but, um, <laughs> and especially by his fellow filmmakers, to be one of the greatest directors that has ever worked in our business. He can be mentioned in the same breath as John Ford, David Lean, Hitchcock, Fellini, Bergman, Kurosawa. Yes, he really does belong in that elite group of directors. So what was he like to work with? Well, of course, as an actor, I can tell you that he was absolutely extraordinary. If, and it was a big if, he trusted you. I do remember an instance before we started shooting clockwork, we were standing outside Abbott's Mead, the house that he lived in in Boreham Wood, and I rather innocently just asked him how he directed his films, because I'd sort of been used to working with, you know, Lindsay Anderson, people from the theater who were nurturing to actors. <laughs> well, he looked at me with a blank stare and he said, um, gee, Malk, I don't know what I want, but I do know what I don't want. Of course, I didn't really understand what he was talking about at the time, but at the beginning of the shoot, I asked him if he had any ideas that he could give me for a particular scene, and he replied, same blank stare. Gee, Malk, I'm not Rada. <laughs> Meaning, of course, the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts, a drama school. Well, I was quite dumbfounded at first, uh, and I thought, well... Uh, the best way to treat this is with humor. So I immediately called for a call sheet and said, uh, look at this, Stan, says here. Hey, S. Kubrick, director. How about a little direction? <laughs> so he burst out laughing, and that's the way our relationship pretty much was. But I realized later when he said this, I'm not Rada thing, that I realized that actually he'd given me the greatest gift of all. He'd actually given me a blank canvas to come in and just do whatever I wanted. Make a complete idiot of myself if I wanted to, and it would not seem ridiculous to him. Well, pretty much all the time, but not all the time. Anyway, there's so many Stanley stories, of course, and we're going to hear a few of them tonight. I remember once, particularly, going into his study, and he had his earphones on, and I thought, oh, and he shh shushed me. I wanted to ask him something, and I thought, well, what on earth is he listening to? Oh, I know. He's listening to the latest Herbert von Karajan recording of Beethoven's Ninth. Uh, and, and this went on for like 20 minutes. Eventually, he took him off and said, uh, another near miss at Heathrow. <laughs> really? Oh, well, <clears throat> sorry about that. <clears throat> On the set with him, it was amazing. Well, he was a little paranoid about air travel. And actually, he was right. There's, you know, near misses all the time going on at Heathrow. Um, <clears throat> in the end scene, in the middle of the film somewhere, and we were all very pleased with ourselves. And, um, you know, it went very well. We were, we came to the beating and rape of the writer's wife scene in the film, and I was rather exhausted, and he was sort of exhausted too. And we sat around for five days thinking, what in hell's name are we going to do? In the script, it said something like, the droogs throw liquor through a plate glass window, and that was it. I know. It was quite boring and realistic and nothing to do with what we'd been shooting. Anyway, on the fifth day, uh, just sitting around, Stanley came up to me and said, can you dance? Boom! That's all I needed. I went immediately into an improv of singing in the rain, whap, bang, smack, boom, kick. And Stanley was looking there. The joy on his face <laughs> was absolutely immense. He was loving it, laughing, because he had an incredibly black, wonderful sense of humor. And I got one of those gestures from him, which either meant an actor was fired or, M Malcolm, um, something I was doing right was okay. He got me into the car. We drove back to his office, 
called New York, bought the rights to sing it in the rain, and we came back, and it took a week to shoot the sequence. But it was a memorable one. 